Okay. So, so we've been looking at uh, we've been looking at uh, problems in linear block code. So we're going to look at some problems in uh, finite fields. Okay. So. So I think there's a question about factorization. We'll come to that later. But for now, uh, let's just go through these questions and see uh, if there's anything, uh, anything that's interesting, or if there's something that I should comment on which I've not seen explicitly in class. Okay. So the first a few questions, which are very standard questions, are construction of finite fields. Okay. So here again, the method is quite standard. What do you need for constructing GFP par n? You need a pi of alpha, which is degree n, a reducible polynomial from, from what? Zp alpha, right? So, okay, so coefficients from Zp. So you need that, and then you simply construct this GFP par m as polynomials of degree less than or equal to m minus 1 in uh, Zp alpha okay. and then for addition we simply do addition there is no problem addition of polynomials modulo p f for the coefficients and for multiplication is modulo pi of alpha So one question that is usually asked in the construction is to make a table for this field. So the table usually means you have to make a table between the power representation and the vector representation. Okay, so that's a very standard table. So in this field, for instance, you make a table between alpha i and the vector representation. Okay, so this will go from i equals 0, which is 1 alpha alpha square. So assuming alpha is primitive, of course. So we take a primitive element, then go all the way to what's the last power we'll go to? C power n minus 2. Okay, and then here you would have that connotation. Okay. So how do you figure this out? So the way you do it is you start with 1 alpha alpha square till about alpha power m minus 1, it will be just itself. Then for alpha power m, what will you get? It will depend on pi of alpha, right? And then for alpha power m plus 1, you have to keep doing that repeatedly. Just multiply by alpha, do modulo pi of alpha all the time okay? and then you can fill it out. So this is a table which represents the field in many ways. right? So if you have to represent this field in a computer program and do manipulations, this is the table that you would remember. So of course there is no alpha, alpha will simply be indexed by the power. Okay? So it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 5, minus 1. Then here you would have vectors, vectors will be co uh, coefficients from z. Right? So each vector here, for instance a generic alpha power i, you will have a uh, a naught, a one, a one minus one. Each case from Z. Okay, so this vector will be from. Uh, a I will come from. Okay, so once you store it in a computer program, you can do any finite field operation you want. Okay, so this is a table which is very useful in construction. Yes, is there a question? Define the construction of field by by particular pi of alpha. Then the uh, alpha will automatically. Uh, denote the uh, primitive element of my program. Uh, so, so here, see, so if you, okay, so the question was about when is alpha primitive, right? That is the question. So, if you do this, if you do the pi of alpha, when is alpha primitive? It's not all the all the time. Okay, so it may be primitive, may not be primitive. So, if you pick your degree m irreducible polynomial carefully, you can make it primitive. Okay, so it's not. Uh, so, so here I have just assumed that alpha itself is primitive. In some cases, it may not be primitive. In that case, some alpha plus 1 or alpha plus something. Else. Some other element will be primitive. And then you make the table with that element. Okay, the table is always made with any primitive element. Okay, there is no point in making the table with any other element because it wouldn't be complete. Okay, so you make the table only with the primitive element. Okay, so if you look at the questions, uh, most of them are basically addition and multiplication tables. So, so instead of making addition and multiplication tables, it's enough if you make this table then say any addition multiplication can be done with this. Okay? And there are uh, various constructions, some with uh, some with 
what's called the primitive irreducible polynomial, another is non-primitive irreducible polynomial. So all these things you can try. I mean, so so let me just define primitive irreducible polynomial if you like. Okay, so if you have power of x being irreducible degree m over set p x, power of x is primitive. Polynomial. First of all, how do I know that there will be some i for which power of x will divide x power i minus 1? Mm, okay, so the right way to answer that is you construct a finite field with this power of x as the irreducible polynomial. Right? And then the root of that irreducible polynomial will definitely divide the x power p power m minus 1, and then definitely power of x will divide x power i minus 1 for some i. Okay? So for i equals p power m minus 1, it will definitely divide. So, but when I say it's primitive, I want the smallest i for which it divides x power i minus 1 to be p power m minus 1. So, here's an example. Take power of x equals x power 4 plus x plus 1. So, it's irreducible and primitive. You can check that. On the other hand, if you take power of x to be x power 4 plus x power 3 plus x power plus x plus 1, it's irreducible. You see that? So what is the i smallest i for which this, this polynomial will divide x power i plus 1? So it's 5, right? So see, see this power of x divides x power 5 plus 1. Okay, so now we are in binary, so minus 1 and plus 1 are the same. So it divides x power 5 plus 1. Okay, so there's one such a, there's also a non-binary example with uh, 9 for instance. So you can take, uh, so if you want a non-binary example, uh, uh, so another example, if you take power of x to be x squared plus, plus 1, is that a primitive? Yeah, I think so. There's one example like that, right? So x squared plus, x squared plus 1 in, it says 3x. This is irreducible. Am I right? <laughs> How do I check that it's irreducible? You can substitute x equals 0, x equals 1, and x equals 2. We never get 0. So it's irreducible but not primitive. What is the smallest uh, i for which this will divide? 4, right? So x power 4 minus 1 is x squared plus 1 times x squared minus 1, and that's so x squared plus 1 divides x power 4 plus 1, uh, 4 minus 1 in any field, okay, so in particular in this is 3x also, you divide, okay, right, so if it were primitive, what is the smallest i for which it should divide, 8, 8 minus 1, okay, so there are other examples, so there is a 3x for which it will be, uh, for, 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 for instance, x power plus x plus 2, then the 3x is think is primitive polynomial. So this is a primitive polynomial. So there are other examples that are possible. All right. So, the, so around this construction, there can be questions like this. Of course, the standard another question is the isomorphism between two fields. Okay. So you have to identify corresponding polynomials and find roots for the polynomials. And once you map it to the primitive elements that way, it will be isomorphism. Okay. So that's the idea of isomorphism. Uh, so let's. let's Identify which elements? The primitive element. Okay, so so the question was how do you identify a primitive element? So usually you have to pick, it's best to pick a primitive polynomial and construct a field. Okay. Okay. Oh, explicitly find, the, how do you find the explicitly the isomorphism? Okay, so you basically find a primitive polynomial. Okay, find a primitive polynomial. Find the roots of the primitive polynomial in both the fields. There will be roots and map those to that to each other. You know that element is primitive and all the powers will map to all the elements and that gives you the small. 
So that's the way it would. I think your, your solutions must talk about it. Is there must know? Uh, it's not state all in all. So you have to look for roots for the for the element. There are ways of doing it beyond uh, trial and error, but usually yeah, trial and error is the just, just try the different elements till you get a primitive form. Okay, so the isomorphism and all is not too critical for uh, from a coding point of view. Okay, so it's not very important. The order is, uh, is is a little bit important. So so let's uh, let's take maybe for instance the fourth question. Okay, so the question here is it says you take G of nine. Okay, what G of nine is going to be? Zero, one, alpha, alpha, four, all the way to alpha, alpha, seven. Okay, alpha is some primitive element. So, order of alpha is A. Okay, you have to find the order of the other elements. Okay, so how do you find the order of the other elements? So, there is a standard formula I gave you. What is the order of alpha pi by? It's what? Yeah, so the order of alpha divided by GCD of i comma order of alpha. Okay, so that's the formula to keep in mind. So you just apply that in very very easily. I mean, it's, it's also a very intuitive and nice formula to think about. Alpha itself, power of eight goes to one. Any other power, depending on how it factors into alpha. So for instance, order of alpha square would be what? Be four, right? Two always factors. Two already is a factor of eight. So you don't have to raise it to two again. So already the two is there. Only raising it to four will give you one. Okay. So what about three? Three you can't do anything because three doesn't have any common factors with eight. So you have to raise it to eight. Okay. What about four? It's going to be two. Okay. So four is already there. So you just square it. You're going to get there. Five. Eight again. Okay. Six. Six is four, right? Remember, two is already there. If you raise it to the power four, that's enough. Okay, and then what about seven? Eight. Right. So you have uh, this kind of a construction. All right. So, so there are some uh, irreducible polynomials. I think there are three irreducible polynomials. Am I right? Three of, of degree two over G of three. So it should be three or four. Four, right? No, no. Yeah. Okay, so no, 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 no. So degree two would be three. Degree one is three of them, right? So I have x, x minus one, and x minus two. Okay, so we have three of them. So in fact, one of these alpha powers will be equal to two, right? So in any construction you make in GF nine, remember GF nine also contains GF three. We have zero and one should also have two. Some power of alpha will be in fact equal to two. Okay, so if you if you do that action computation, you'll see it will be equal to two. It's not very hard to do. So so we have. Three degree one irreducible polynomials, and then three degree two irreducible polynomials, and you can do that. Okay, so it's a little bit work. It's a little bit unusual to do these things in coding, but usually we are we are obsessed with characteristic two. Okay, characteristic two is what is most interesting from the coding theory point of view. Okay, so the same exercise we repeat for GF sixteen, which is quite easy. Then we also ask for GF thirty two. Okay, what will happen in GF thirty two? Yeah, so if you have alpha primitive, order of alpha pi alpha is 31. Okay, so 31 cannot have a common factor with anything. So order of every element becomes equal to 31. So order of every every alpha pi for i equals 1 to 30 equals 31. Of course, order of one is one itself. Order of zero is not different. So. Okay, so that's about order. Okay, so let's uh, move on to the web question. Okay, so then there are some simultaneous uh, equations. So I want to look at that real quick just to get your feel for. It. What's happening here? So let's look at uh, the seventh question first. This looks interesting. So we have the alpha belonging to GF16 being primitive. Okay, this is the seventh question. 
potato and the side is always alpha plus four and alpha plus one that's what's given to you and then you given two equations x plus y equals alpha plus four three and x plus three plus y plus three equals alpha okay and you have to find x and y okay so the first thing you need to do such problems is you will need the table of gf 16 Okay, only then you can do any computation. So the first thing you should do when you see a problem involving GF16 in your exam or anything else or tutorials is to make that table. There are 16 elements in the table and you have to make that table. There is no other way. If you don't make the table, you can never do the computation. Okay, you quickly make the table. It's not very hard. If you practiced it enough, it will come out very quickly. In fact, you can even mark it up if you like. Okay, so but have the table ready with you. Okay, all right. So you quickly make the table on the side and then you can do the computation. Okay. So solving these kind of equations, how would you do it if it's not finite field, if it was some say, real number or something, x plus y I give you, x plus 3 plus y plus 3 I give you, how do you do it? Yeah, so so the trick is to factor x plus 3 plus y plus 3, right? So how do you factor x plus 3 plus y plus 3? x plus y times x squared minus x y plus y squared, you know that factor. So why, why is that factoring useful? Well, x plus y is already given to you, okay, and then that gives you x squared minus x y plus y squared and real number. And after that, what do you do? You write x plus y, x squared plus y squared as x plus y whole squared minus 2 x y. Okay, that x plus y is again given to you, so ultimately you get x y. So once you find x plus y and x y, you can go to a quadratic equation and you will get x and y individually. Okay, so such methods are, I mean, this basically elimination. You are trying to eliminate one equation from the other, one variable from the other. How you do it is this. Thing. So you can also do it in the most straightforward way. You simply take x equals alpha plus 14 minus y and substitute it to the next one. You get a cubic equation in y. That might be quadratic directly. Okay, so that also might be easy enough, right? So that's something you can straightforward try. Or if you want to do more fancy factorization, now, you can do that also. Okay? Try one of the two. You will get one equation involving y, okay, or x. And then what do you do? Yeah, so in, in GF16 that is a bit easier, it's a bit mechanical there. Okay, what do you do? You try one element after the other and find which is a 0. Okay, so in, in uh, real numbers and all, you might need complicated formula for finding the roots. In the GF16, there's no, really no, I mean, there are formulae, but it's as good as simply substituting one element after the other and then figuring out what the root is. Is that clear? Okay, so now let's try like the first attempt. Okay, so, so from the first equation, you see that y equals alpha plus 14 plus x. Okay, and then you substitute that into this, you get x plus 3 plus alpha plus 14 plus x whole plus 3 equals alpha. So what happens if I expand this? Then alpha plus 42, what is alpha plus 42? Alpha plus 12 plus 3 times, 3 is the same as 1, right? 3 times alpha plus 14 squared, that will be alpha plus 28, which is alpha plus 13 times x plus Another 3 times alpha plus 14 times x squared. So that's just alpha plus 14 x squared plus what? x plus 3. Okay, and that equals alpha. And then x plus 3 cancels and you get like a quadratic equation. Okay, so alpha plus 14 x squared plus alpha plus 14 x plus alpha plus alpha plus 12. Okay, so whatever that is. So that's what the table will help you to give you a simple answer there. Okay. So so you might think that the quadratic uh, quadratic uh, uh, polynomial roots formula, right? So that might apply, it actually applies, but the problem is characteristic 2 doesn't really apply okay? because you have to divide by 2, right? So that's the formula, it's minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 2 ac of 4 ac by 2a, okay? And you can't divide by 2, okay? So you, that, that formula will not apply for quadratic equation. It would be nice if that formula had applied, then you can actually compute it. So if the formula doesn't apply, you can't uh, compute it directly, okay? So you have to substitute. One other. So by trial and error, find roots. Okay, so it's enough if you find one root. The other root is easy to find. Okay, so why? Okay, so you might know some other simple formula for product of roots, sum of roots. This formula still apply. Okay, it's not that they go they go away. So you write it as x plus alpha one, x plus alpha two. You get the same rules applying. Okay, so you simplify it a little bit. And find one root, the other can be found easily by computation. Alright? So that's the way we are solving these things. Uh, so there is also a similar question, question number 8, which asks you to find 
uh, two cases, similar, uh, exact same setup okay, as before, then the we have here an equation like this. So instead of x bar 3, it is x squared. Okay. Okay. Here something curious will happen. Okay. So in characteristic two phase, squaring will not really give you an independent equation. Okay. So you square x plus y, what do you get? x squared plus y squared. Okay. And it has to be equal to alpha plus 6. So this equation is really useless. Okay. So this just repeats what the first equation is. So only equation you have to solve is x plus y equals alpha plus 3. How many different solutions are there? You can take x to be an arbitrary element of g of 16. So there are 16 different solutions to x plus y equals alpha plus 3. So that's how you do the part A. Okay, so only this. So this is repetitive, redundant. Okay, redundant. Okay, so let me just not write uh, that. Right okay, so it's uh, same as same as this thing. So you only have to solve this. So there are 16 uh, parts. Okay, so if you order them, so you have to order them. There are 16 types of solutions. Okay. Part B is a bit interesting, so here again you have an equation, so x plus y is alpha plus 3, but then x squared plus y square has to be equal to alpha. What will happen if you try and solve this? We will never get a solution. Okay, so this system will not have a solution, because if x plus y is alpha plus 3, what should happen to x squared plus y square? It should be alpha plus 6. So here, there is an inconsistency. Okay, so that implies no solutions in Okay, of course, the real numbers and all are complexes, you can definitely find solutions here. Okay, so it's not a problem, but in uh, GS16, it's, it's not going to work. Okay, and uh, then there are other other methods. I mean, so this squaring idea is, is very useful. So you can use it, for instance, in the ninth question, you have to use repeated squaring till you get to, uh, till you get to something like that. So, so this, I'm going to skip that. So let's move on to... Okay, so questions uh, 12 to 12 to 16 don't really apply, okay? 12 to 16 don't apply, it's not enough for the quiz at least. There are more general uh, problems, it's not uh, important. Okay, so, so let, let me talk about factorizations. Okay, some of the factorization questions are interesting. So 18th for instance, ask you the factor uh, polynomials of the form x bar n plus 1 over g of 2. Okay. So when I say g of 2, it means I want the each factor to be have, have only binary coefficients. Okay. So how do you factor x bar n plus 1 over g of 2? So based on what you know, let me see. What's the first step? Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, x plus 1 will be a factor always. So those things you can find. But I want it want to factor completely. Okay. So the first step is to factor x bar n plus 1 into linear factors over some extension field. Okay, so that's the first step. Okay. So you factor into linear factors. And some gf to power n. Okay, so how do you go about finding this? m such that this will factor into linear factors in gf to power m. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the idea. So you have to find some root for x power m plus 1 in this gf to power m. Okay. So remember, I have a root for, see, if I take a primitive element of this, if alpha is a primitive element here, what is the order of alpha? Alpha power 2 power m minus 1 equals 1. Okay. So which means this primitive element is a root of Okay, so it's a primitive root. I'll tell you in what, what way it's a primitive root. Root of x bar 2 power m minus 1 plus 1. Right? So, so what do I mean by a primitive root? So not only is alpha a root, all the powers of alpha are exactly the distinct roots of x bar 2 power m minus 1 plus 1. Is that okay? Right? Powers of alpha are distinct roots. Okay, so we know all this, right? This is the standard result for finite fields. Okay, so you take a primitive element, take all its powers, they give you all the distinct roots of x bar 2 power m minus 1. Okay? So similarly, if you find an element of order n in 2 power m, g of 2 power m, okay, suppose you find, so in this g of 2 power m, suppose g 
डेटा बनाऊंगी जी एस टू पार्टी एस ऑर्डर इक्वल टू एक्स ओके देन आई कैन केम एक्स पावर एन प्लस वन इज एक्स प्लस डेटा टाइम्स एक्स प्लस डेटा स्क्वायर तो वन टू एक्स प्लस डेटा पार एन माइनस वन देन यू हैव एक्स प्लस डेटा पार एन द बोर्ड एक्स प्लस डेटा पार एन दो एक्चुअली एक्स प्लस वन ओके सो दैट इज मैटर So you can claim that this has to work, okay? Right? This has to be true in GF two para. Why is that? You know, beta is the root of x para n plus one. Beta square also is the root. Beta para three is also the root. That way, you can find all the end groups. There cannot be any repetition there. Why? Because beta is order n. If there's a repetition, then the order will be there. Okay? So that cannot happen. Okay? So the trick is to factor x para n plus one into linear factors. You have to find an element of order n in GF two para. Okay, so how do you do that? What are the elements? What are the orders of elements of GF two par n? Yeah, something has to divide two par n minus one. Only if you have a number which divides two par n minus one, you can find an element of that order. There. So you have to find the m such that n divides two par n minus one. So that's the first step. Okay, so you find m such that find m such that n divides two par n minus one, and then I can claim. Uh, so alpha is a primitive element of n g f two par m. Okay, so alpha is a primitive element of g f two par m. I can claim that alpha power what two par m minus one divided by n has order equals order equal to n. Why will that two par m minus one by n be a proper division? We have chosen m such that n has to divide. Two par m minus one. Okay, so let me ask you this question: For every n, are you guaranteed that n will divide two par m minus one? It's one minor condition you need on n. N has to be odd. For every odd n, it turns out there will be an n for which n will divide two par m minus one. This is follows from this formula. Let me tell you, it's not too difficult to prove. You can also prove it if you like. Okay, for every odd n, there will be an m such that n divides two par m minus one. If n is even, of course, there's no question of n dividing 2 par m minus 1 for any n but then if n is even what can you do okay so you can always fact so this is it's square right so when is even suppose n is 2k right x par n plus 1 is what x par k plus 1 whole square so you have repeated roots and all you have the factor is only x par k plus 1 so if k is also even what do you do you keep repeating this till you get to an odd power when you get to an odd power you seek this result and do the factorization okay So now we have not done. We only factor over G F two par m. How will I go from G F two par m factors to G F two factors? That is the general idea. I mean, we did this before, no? Correct. Ah, we have to look at combine them according to the minimal polynomial idea. So according to the cyclotomic process. So we find all cyclotomic uh, conjugates of beta. Okay. So you know beta conjugates all will be in this set only. Right, you are just raising beta to different powers. It will all be within this set. So you divide it up among common conjugates, multiply them together. You are guaranteed that the polynomial will be minimal. I mean, so it will be inside the in coefficients from G of. So that's the idea. So you first find m such that m such that this happens. This this will also happen. Okay, and then you factor uh, x star n plus one into linear factors n. Just two par m, okay. and then you combine these factors of conjugates to get factors over here. Okay, so this is very similar to the previous idea that we had. Okay, except that now instead of n being itself. P par n minus one. It is some other number, and you have to go to a suitable field and then do it. Okay. So again, convince yourself that once I find the beta like this, the conjugates of beta will always be inside this set, right? So where do I find conjugates? I square beta, and then I square it again. So it's only powers of beta. I can never leave any of these factors. So you can group these factors together to go to a smaller field. Okay. So let me just show you really quickly, really quickly some examples. Okay. So there are some examples in part A. We are asked to do something like x bar nine plus one. Okay, so let's try x bar five plus one. This is a bit interesting. So 
thing is passar by one. Not doing it there. So let's try it's five plus one. Okay. So what is the m? Right. M equals four works. Right. Five divides two plus four minus one, which is fifteen. Okay. So if you take alpha being a primitive element of g of two part g of fifteen, what is the order of alpha part three? Equals five. Okay, so I know here x bar five plus one factors as x plus alpha bar three, x plus alpha bar six, x plus alpha bar twelve, and x plus alpha bar nine, and then x plus one. Okay, I know now three, six, nine, and twelve are the acyclically closed elements. So all those four will multiply together and give me x bar four plus x bar three plus x bar plus x plus one, and that's the factorization. So from here you combine. Alpha bar three, alpha bar six, alpha bar twelve, alpha bar nine. To get x bar four plus one equals x plus one times x bar four plus x bar three plus x bar plus x bar. Okay, so that's the idea in that factorization. So let me just show you x bar nine plus one. Okay, so what do you do for m? Okay, so turns out six is the correct answer. Okay, so we can pick m equals six, and we'll see that nine divides two plus six minus one, which is sixty-three. Okay, so if we take alpha being g of m g of sixty-four primitive, order of what is nine? Seven is nine. Okay, so this will factor as uh, you know alpha plus seven so on. Okay, so what will be the last some some factor? No, so it's less. Alpha bar 63, right? So today I'll do it till that. Okay. So maybe I should write it down. Okay. So let's just do this. Let's just do this quickly. So x plus alpha bar 14 x plus alpha bar 21 x plus alpha bar 28. Merit. Right. X plus alpha bar 35 x plus alpha bar 42 x plus alpha bar 48 49. I'm sorry. You can also do it without alpha. You can do it in a very nice way. So, uh, so this is the alpha bar of six times x plus one. Okay, so that's the factoring of our G of sixty-four. So now we should start combining conjugates. So let, let's look at conjugates of seven. Okay, so if you look at seven, alpha bar seven, alpha bar fourteen, alpha bar twenty-eight, alpha bar fifty-six. What's the next one? One one two would be sorry. Forty nine and then that's that's it. I am more unique. Forty nine is ninety eight. That should be thirty five, right? So that's it. Those are the conjugates. The next one will come back to alpha bar seven, right? So what is left? Alpha bar twenty one. I thought that forty two, forty two will go back to twenty one again. Okay, so that's the combination of conjugates. So you see, this will give you x squared plus x plus one. That's easy to find out. This will give you some six degree minimal polynomial. Okay, so it depends on the table. Okay, so if you have a table or a multiplier and simplify it, you get some six degree minimal polynomial. So in fact, x squared nine plus one will factor as x plus one times x squared plus x plus one times minimal polynomial of alpha plus seven. Okay, so you can write it in terms of that. Okay, so that's the uh, rule. Yeah, that's true. So there's another way to quickly find that out if you like. So in fact, this minimal polynomial can be easily found like this. Found it. So if you do this factorization, this is actually one plus x bar three. You know that one plus x bar three divides one plus x bar nine. So what will be left? It will actually be one plus x bar three plus x bar six. Okay, so you can quickly find it in reverse like that if you like. But anyway, so that's the that's the idea. Okay, so anything else also we factor the uh, same way. Okay, so the smallest field over which x bar n plus one factors into linear factors is called the splitting field. Okay, for any polynomial that is true, any polynomial if there is a field over which it splits into linear factors, that field is called the splitting field. Okay, so for any real coefficient polynomial, what is the splitting field? The complex num field is a splitting field. That's all. For any polynomials, it won't be a splitting field. There is no one unifying splitting field. Right, so you have to find different splitting fields. Okay, so I think that kind of brings us to the end of uh, most problems that I wanted to discuss. There are still other problems.
and uh, we are welcome to look at it. And the uh, question, uh, the exam is tomorrow, right? So the exam is for uh, 25 marks. There will be three questions based on these two assignments. Okay, so we will meet. Where, where are we meeting for the exam at 8 o'clock? Do you know the room? No. So anyway, find out the room and then come back. I will see you. Okay, thanks. I'm sorry? It's a 50 minute exam, standard quiz. 